The Strange Dr. Weird. Good evening. Come in, won't you? Why, what's the matter? You seem a bit nervous. Has the cemetery outside this house upset you? There are things far worse than cemeteries. For instance, being lost in an Arctic storm, as in the story I want to tell you tonight. A story I call Survival of the Fittest. My story, Survival of the Fittest, begins in the cold, bleak wastes of Alaska, stretching endlessly as far as the eye can see in one vast white expanse. The fierce winter wind hurls itself at a small cabin almost buried by the snow. In the cabin, four men are huddled around the embers of a fire. Mike, what are we going to do? We're leaving the first thing in the morning for Goldfield. In this storm? It's either make a try for Goldfield or die here of starvation. Mike's right, Paul. We're to stay here. Our food would be gone in five days. Much better we try to get to town. Kiana, how's the weather look to you? You think it'll blow over by tomorrow? Storm bad. Not blow over soon. All right, that settles it. We're getting out of here first thing in the morning. We've come in these four days, Mike. I should say about 70 miles. That means 50 more miles to Goldfield. Yeah, it's going to be a hard 50 miles, too. Dogs are all worn out. We only have food enough for one day. Mike, you don't think we'll have any trouble making it, do you? In this country, you always have trouble. Only the strong and ruthless survive. Hold up! Hold up! Here! Kiana! Blink Kiana, Mike. Kiana's having trouble breaking trail for the dogs. He's slowing us down, eating food that might pull us through. He's no longer useful to us. Yeah, I'd be here. Yana? What do you want? I'm afraid we don't need you anymore. You not understand. Huh? Maybe this will make you understand. Mike! No, don't! No, no. oh. <laughs> you... You killed him? Yeah, I had to. I told you only the strong can survive. We need the food here to have eaten. Paul, you start breaking trail for the dogs. We're going on. Come on! Push! 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 Mike, it's been two days since we've eaten anything. We can't go on without food, Mike. Why don't we kill one of the dogs? Yeah. Because we need every dog we have to pull the furs on the sled. All right, Paul, start breaking trail for the dogs. We've rested enough. No, I can't. I'm too tired. The dogs can break their own trail. Why, you young whelp. Go ahead. Right. Shoot me. Like you did, Kiana. You're not worth wasting a bullet on. If you're too tired to break trail, you can remain behind. Well, Mike, you can't leave him here to die. Oh, can I? Are you ready, Victor? Yes, I'm ready. Paul, will run along behind the sled. All right, Victor. Mush! Mush! Here! Hey! Hey! Mike! Mike, why don't you let me throw away this bundle of furs I'm carrying? Then I could break trail for the dogs. Throw away $500 worth of furs? I should say not. Come on! Mush! Paul! Hey, uh, Paul, don't stop behind. Keep running. I will, Victor. Uh, as long as I can. Mike! Mike, look! The dogs are disappearing! Victor, let go of the sled! Mike! Mike, the dogs in sled have vanished in that crevasse in the ice! Yeah. A year's furs lost in a few seconds. What do we do now? Uh, now we'll start floundering through the snow towards Goldfield. If our strength holds out, we'll make it. If it doesn't, we'll die. And now I'll finish my story, Survival of the Fittest. It is early the next morning. Three figures, mere specks on the vast white expanse, make their way slowly and painfully across the snow. Finally, one, unable to go any further, stops and sinks into the snow. Mike, Mike, wait! Uh, Paul, I've fallen down! Paul, you must get up and keep going. If you don't, you'll freeze to death. I can't walk another step, Victor. I'm too tired. Ah, so he's fallen down, eh? Well, Paul, you'll either get up and start walking or stay behind and die. Mike, if each of us took him by the arm, we could help him along. Nothing doing. It's every man for himself. I'm not going to waste my strength. Paul, 
Oh, you must get up. Here, let me help you. No. Leave me alone. I can't go any further. Mike, we can't leave him here to die. Why can't we? Because it's inhuman. It's common sense. The weak die and the strong live. Now, are you going on with me, or are you going to stay behind to die with him? Paul. Paul, you must get up. Can't you say nothing can save him? Now he's half frozen already. Are you coming, Victor? Yes, I'm coming, Mike. Goodbye, Paul. May the Lord have mercy on your soul. As the uh, two men continued on their way, the snow swept over Paul's body and soon hid it from sight. Hour after hour, Mike and Victor struggled along. For the first time in days, they saw the sun and its warmth helped them to withstand the cold. Well, late that afternoon, Victor began to fall behind. Mike, Mike, wait for me. Hurry up! I'm coming as fast as I can. Ah, you'll never get to Goldfield at this rate. Must be at least another ten miles. Ten miles? I'll never make it without food. My stomach feels as though... Like uh, you're eating something. Yeah, that's right. You're, you're eating pemmican. Where'd you get it? Get it? I had it all the time in this pouch. To me, to me, the food didn't run out four days ago. It ran out for you and Paul, but not for me. I just finished eating the last of it. So you stole the food. That might have saved Paul and myself. <laughs> You're nothing but a dirty murderer. A murderer and a thief. Do you hear? Yeah, but when all's said and done, Victor, I'm going to live and you're going to die. Someday, Mike, you'll pay for your crime. <laughs> and when that day comes... Hey, listen, a plane. Where is it? My eyes. Everything's a little blurry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah there it is. Look. A plane. It's coming this way. They see us. It's an army plane. They dropped something. A package. Food. That's what it is. Yeah, and look. Look, it landed in the snow. Only a hundred yards from it. Eh? Where? Darn that sun in my eyes. I can't see it. Yeah, 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 I see it now. That package will do me nicely until I reach Goldfield. I'll make it for sure now. Well, there's plenty for both of us in it, Mike. You are going to share it with me, aren't you? All you're going to get is this song. Yeah. I won't have you telling any tales about me later. After I pick up that package, I won't be back. My, my, come back. Don't leave me here to die. Yeah. Oh, where did that package drop? I thought I... Oh, oh there it is, over there. Half buried in the snow. Funny, first I can see it, then I can't. I... <clears throat> my eyes... Oh, they feel as if knives are being stuck into them. I can't see. What's happening to me? My eyes, I'm snow blind. That's it. The glare of the sun all day. I'm snow blind. Victor! Victor, where are you? I'm back here, Mike. Victor, you gotta help me. I can't see a thing. I'm snow blind. You mean, you mean you can't see anything? No. No, my eyes hurt so I can't stand it. It's the sun, the glare all day. That's done it. My eyes feel as if they were full of needles whenever I open them. Oh, oh, what do you want me to do, Mike? Look, crawl over to that package. You still have enough strength? And bring it over here. It'll keep us alive. In a day or two, I'll be able to see again, and then I'll get us both in the gold field. I, I, I can't, Mike. My legs are too stiff. What? I can't move them. We'll both die here now. Now, now, now I won't die. I won't. I'll find that food myself. <laughs> I know which direction it was in. I can find it if I hunt long enough. That's what you think. Yeah, you're just trying to confuse me. It's in this direction. I know it is. I can feel the sun on my face. Mike, Mike, come back. Stop. Come back. <laughs> I am going right. Or you wouldn't be trying so hard to stop me. I'll show you, Victor. I'm going to live, you hear? I'm going to live. And you're going to die. No. No, Mike. Come back, Mike. There's a crevasse in the ice ahead of you. You'll fall into it. You expect me to fall for a sucker trick like that? The crevasse was behind me. I remember that. Mike, look out! Ah! Too bad about Mike, wasn't it? Or was it? It was really his own fault he fell into the crevasse. Because, you see, Mike, being the kind of man no one could trust, he felt he could trust no one. Victor? Oh, yes, Victor lived. 
he finally managed to get to the package of food and survived until a rescue party could reach him next day. So if you're ever tempted to sacrifice your friends to save yourself, just remember that the... Oh, you have to go now? Well, perhaps you'll drop in again soon. Just look for the house on the other side of the cemetery. The house of Dr. Weir. Thank you.